guys, happy Palm Sunday. Um, you're going to see this on Monday, but I'm taping it actually on Palm Sunday. I hope you guys had a great weekend and um, hopefully you got to enjoy church from your home. It's definitely different. I miss my church family and I miss sitting in um, the sanctuary and worshiping together. But man, I feel blessed to be able to at least... Um, listen to the sermon, hear the stories, even if I can't be there in person. Um, I hope you guys got out in the sunshine too. It was, it was a beautiful day. This is one of my favorite weeks all year round because it's the week leading up to Easter Sunday. And I love the Easter story. It's my absolute favorite Bible story. And I can't wait to share, um, all kinds of good, fun Easter stuff with you. Before we get started, I thought um, we might do another game. This one's not a sight word game, but this is our CVC word making um, game. So think back to our classroom and our word making wall. We had, unfortunately I do not have my blue marker, but instead I have my green marker. First thing you need to do is get a piece of paper and have big brother or big sister or someone help you write out all the letters of the alphabet. I color coded mine just like we would see in the classroom. Our vowels which are A, E, whoa, <laughs> I, O down here, oops, and then U are red. The rest of the letters can be any color you choose. In our classroom, they were blue. So go have someone help you with that. If you can do it by yourself, even better. Now, once that's done, let's make some words together. All you need to do is pull down a consonant, pull down a vowel, and end with the consonant. So it will look like this. A green for me, then a red, and then a green. Do you remember this? Yes, our CVC words. Okay, let's begin. I'm going to pick C. Then I'm going to put, what should I put in the middle? What's a consonant? I'm going to put A. And then I'm going to put D. Uh, no, I'm going to put a B. Let's sound it out. Here is a CBC word. Beginning sound. K, k, k. Ah, ah, ah. B, b, b. Cab. <gasps> cab. I spelled a word. That's a perfect CBC word. Cab. And then what you can do is cross out the ones you choose. So I used a C. And I used to be. I'm going to keep the A um, unmarked because I might use that again. See if you can go through the whole alphabet making CBC words. Let's do one more. I'm going to do a green, a red, and a green. This time I'm going to choose M. Then I'm going to choose, let's do an I. And then J. That would be great. Okay, let's sound this one out together. M, I, J, Midge. Midge. Hey, that's a great nonsense word. Remember that words that are CVC, consonant, vowel, consonant, that you might not find in a book are still considered um, nonsense words. And that's perfect. So. See if you can go through the whole alphabet. That's my challenge to you. Make a whole bunch of awesome CVC words and practice blending those sounds together. All right, now on to Easter. Easter has uh, a lot of, um, what would we say, family traditions involved. Sometimes you as your family might decorate Easter eggs. Some of you might have the Easter Bunny come. Or you might go on um, Easter egg hunts outside. Those are all really fun family traditions. So today we're going to talk about, or I have a couple of activities for um, 
you to kind of play around with. Then on Wednesday, we're going to talk about um, Jesus and him dying on the cross and being resurrected. And I have some great activities for that too that I'll share with you on Wednesday. So take a look. Here is what I've attached to your email. Hopefully this will work today. The first one, let's slide it down, is course it's not going to focus is a Easter egg um, memory game matching game and so what you can do is if you have some empty plastic eggs at home you just open up the shells and you cover up the pictures with those eggs make sure you mix up all the colors and then you're gonna play matching a matching game you're gonna pick up one of the eggs and see what pictures underneath it and see if you can match it to one um, somewhere else kind of like a memory game the second thing I have attached for you is really cool it is kind of a science project we've done it once before what you're gonna do is uh, take an egg shape and I have attached a worksheet that has an egg shape on it you're gonna find a white crayon at home hopefully you have a white crayon and you're gonna make a pattern on that egg maybe you'll do polka dots or you'll do stripe lines and then you take watercolors and you paint over that white crayon pattern and you have, I don't know why that's not focusing, you have this awesome design that shows up. If you remember right, we did color crayon once before where we colored it and then painted over it. So I have both of those things attached to the bottom of your email today. If you don't have a white crayon, you know what? We used colored crayon. Um, regular colors worked just fine. If you don't have watercolors, do you remember what Miss B does? You can take a marker. If um, ask mom and dad first, take a marker and dip it into a little bit of water and use that. And that works very similar to watercolors. And then you can make beautiful egg designs. So the other thing that uh, I attach to the bottom is a Palm Sunday just fun activity um, for it might be a little bit hard for you guys because it has some big words it's a word search but if you ask someone big brother big sister if they could help you or um, mom dad grandpa grandma whoever happens to be in your home you maybe they can sit down and help you search for these words do you know the significance of Palm Sunday did you learn that in Sunday school today or online church? I want you to see if um, someone knows in your house. We'll talk. We will definitely talk about it on Wednesday. But see if, um, if you don't already know, try to find out what, why we call today Palm Sunday. Um, the words from the word search will help you kind of figure out what uh, the importance of Palm Sunday is too. All right, it's time to read our story. Are you ready? Like I said, I bet we're halfway through. We only have one more dinosaur lesson, and I'm thinking I'm going to keep it until next week so we can focus on Easter. But back to our story, Dinosaurs Before Dark. And I have to remember what, <laughs> what was happening in this story. Um, they found that gold coin, the medallion they called it, and it had a big letter M on it. And they, um, I think they were heading down the hill. They had found the Tronodon. They had found a Triceratops. And now they were going, I think they were moving away. Chapter six, they were moving away from the trauma, uh, the, the <laughs> Triceratops. And chapter six is called Dinosaur Valley. Annie, look at this, Jack called. Look what I found. Annie had gone up to the hilltop. I'd forgotten that. They went up to the hilltop. She was busy picking a flower from the magnolia tree. Annie, look, a 
medallion. But Annie wasn't paying attention to Jack. She was staring at something on the other side of the hill. Oh, wow, said Annie. Annie! Clutching her magnolia flower, she looked down the hill. Annie, come back, he shouted. But Annie had disappeared. I'm going to kill her, Jack muttered. He stuffed the medallion into his jean pocket. Then he heard Annie shriek, Annie? Jack heard another sound as well, a deep bellowing sound, like a tuba. A tuba is um, a brass instrument, and it does have very loud, deep sound. Jack, come here, Annie called. Annie! Jack grabbed his backpack and raced up the hill. When he got to the top, he gasped. The valley below was filled with nests, big nests, made out of mud. And the nests were filled with <gasps> dinosaurs. Filled with dinosaurs. Tiny baby dinosaurs. Oh, remember that unlike a mammal, dinosaurs were um, born, they were hatched from eggs. Annie was crouching next to one of the nests, and standing over her was a gigantic duck-billed dinosaur. Don't panic. Don't move, Jack said. He stepped slowly down the hill toward Annie. The huge dinosaur was towering above Annie, waving her arms, making her tuba sound. Jack stopped. He didn't want to get too close. He knelt on the ground. Okay, move toward me slowly, he said. Annie started to stand up. Don't stand, crawl, said Jack. Clutching her flower, Annie crawled toward Jack. The duck-billed dinosaur followed her, still bellowing. I have a feeling that's a mama, a mama dinosaur, and she's protecting her, her babies in the nest. Annie froze. Keep going, Jack said softly. Annie started crawling again. Jack inched forward down the hill until he was just at arm's length, diff, uh, arm's length distance from Annie. He reached out and grabbed her hand. He pulled Annie toward him. Stay down, he said. He crouched next to her. Bow your head, pretend to chew. Chew? Yes, I read. That's what you do if you, if, that's what you do if a mean dog comes at you. She's not a dog, Jack, said Annie. Just chew, said Jack. Jack and Annie both bowed their heads and pretended to chew. I see what they're doing. They're pretending like they're dinosaurs too and eat, pretending to eat the ground. Maybe that dinosaur won't realize that the kids are different than, than the dinosaur is. Soon the dinosaur grew quiet. Jack raised his head. I don't think she's mad anymore, he said. Oh, thanks, Jack, for saving me, said Annie. You have to use your brain, said Jack. You can't just go run into a nest of babies. There's always a mother nearby. Annie stood up. Annie, too late. Annie held out her magnolia flower to the dinosaur. I'm sorry I made you worry about your baby, she said. The dinosaur moved closer to Annie. She grabbed the flower from her. Ooh, she reached for another. No more, said Annie. Uh-oh. The dinosaur let out a sad tuba sound. But there are more flowers up there, Annie said. She pointed to the top of the hill. I'll get you some. Annie hurried up the hill. The dinosaur waddled after her. Jack quickly examined the babies, and some were crawling out of their nests. Where were the other mothers? Jack took out his dinosaur book. He flipped through the pages. He found a picture of some duck-billed dinosaurs, and he read the caption. You look here is the caption. Oh, it's an apatosaurus. Apatosauruses live in colonies or herds. While a, a few mothers, babies, sat the nests, the others went hunting for food. That makes sense. So one is the babysitter, and the rest of the mamas went out to get food. So there must be mothers close by. Hey, Jack, Annie called. Jack looked up. Annie was at the top of the hill, feeding magnolia flowers to the giant apatosaurus. Oh my goodness, that's funny. 
She's nice too, Jack, Annie said. But suddenly, the apatosaurus made her terrible to to bust out. Annie crouched down and started to chew. The dinosaur barged down the hill. She seemed afraid of something. Jack put the book down on the top of his pack and hurried up to Annie. Hmm. I don't know. I wonder why she's running away, said Annie. We were starting to be friends. Jack looked around. What he saw in the distance almost made him throw up. An enormous, ugly monster was coming across the plain. He was what? He was walking on two big legs. Um, we know if it's walking on two legs, it is most likely an, a meat eater. And swinging a long, thick tail and dangling two tiny arms. You're right, it's a T-Rex. He had a huge head and his jaws were wide open. Even from far away, Jack could see his long, gleaming teeth. A Tyrannosaurus roar, whispered Jack. They better get out of there. That's the end of the chapter. Chapter 7. Ready, set, go. <laughs> if you saw a T-Rex, you would need to be running and be ready to go, huh? Um, I love that this book has some things, that, some scientific things that we know, like uh, dinosaur eggs and the different kinds of dinosaurs. I can't wait to see what happens in the next chapter. My prediction is the T-Rex is going to come after maybe those mo those eggs or those baby dinosaurs in the nest and the mamas are going to have to come back and chase them off. What do you think? What's your prediction? All right, guys. I love you lots. It was good to see you today, and we will learn more about Jesus' resurrection and the Easter story on Wednesday. See you then. Bye.